John Dalton is considered the father of modern atomic theory. His efforts gave us our first understanding of the atom. He was foremost a chemist, and his main scientific work was focused on the behaviour and properties of gases. Dalton developed his atomic theory in the early 1800s. He predicted elements are made of the smallest particles called atoms, therefore they cannot be divided. All atoms for a particular element are identical. Atoms of different elements can be told apart by their atomic weight and can combine in chemical reactions to form chemical compounds in fixed ratios. Atoms cannot be created, destroyed or divided as they are the smallest particles of matter. All matter is composed of atoms. His predictions led to a major advance in stoichiometry. In 1808, Dalton published New System of Chemical Philosophy, which was a list of atomic masses for specific elements. In 1826, Dalton received a Royal Medal for his work. The ratio of elements enabled him to develop a working theory of the atom. He noticed that certain gases maintain the same ratios of mixture regardless of the amount. This led to the conclusion that the ratios remained the same because they were consistent down to the smallest particle or atom, meaning gases had to be made of small particles. Using Dalton's symbolic representation of invisible atoms, their combining properties could be drawn out, th thought about, revised and corrected. Today's scientists are very comfortable with the idea of model building and using real or computer models to help them prod and poke around the idea. But in Dalton's day, this concept was a major breakthrough. Chemical reactions could be studied on paper to see if they would work when carried out in an experiment. This made it possible to study its properties and behaviours in a rational and mathematical way. Dalton did not manage to convince everyone about his theory right away, although a number of chemists were quickly convinced how true the theory was. On October 21st, 1803, Dalton stood before the Manchester Literary and Philosophical where he announced to the world the relative weights of the atoms. This fundamental breakthrough did not go unnoticed and he was immediately invited to repeat his announcements before the Royal Institution of London. Some scientists accepted the concepts that at once, for example, Thomas Thomson and William Hyde Wollaston. However, some were sceptical for as long as 60 years, like Charles William Eliot Weil, and then there were those who were just downright hostile, like Davy. But as more and more experimental work confirmed the theoretical work, Davy was forced to admit that Dalton was right and that all matter was atomic in nature. There were some flaws in Dalton's work. For example, he assigned the atomic weight of oxygen as 7 instead of 8. Despite these errors, Dalton's theory provided a logical explanation of concepts and led the way into new fields of experimentation, i.e. most of his predictions apply to modern-day chemistry as they still remain true. Joseph John Thompson was born in Chisholm Hill, Manchester on the 18th of December, 1856. He was the son of Emma Swindles and his father, who was also called Joseph John Thompson. He was the president of the Royal Society from 1915 to 1920. He was a scientist who discovered the electron. He didn't make his suggestion public to the scientific community until the 30th of April, 1897. He had many famous students who studied under him. One of the most famous of these was Ernest Rutherford. He was awarded with the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1906. Between May and June 1897, he investigated whether or not rays could be deflected by an electric field. He believed that his experiments were flawed because the Crookes tubes they used contained too much gas. Joseph John Thompson died on the 30th of August 1940 at aged 83, and he was buried near Sir Isaac Newton in Westminster Abbey. Henry Mosley, born 1887, made many important contributions to science, including demonstrating that atomic numbers were not arbitrary, 
but had a physical basis that could be measured, and he also discovered isotopes. This breakthrough in Mosley's law would enable the elements in the periodic table to be put in their or correct order, and the existence of as yet unknown elements to be accurately predicted. His work provided one of the first experimental tests of quantum theory. Many believe that, had he lived, Mosley would have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Mosley's change to the periodic table allowed few problems with Mendeley's periodic table to disappear. He attended Trinity College, Oxford in 1906. At that time, Oxford did not have a particularly notable science curriculum, but Mosley chose the school in order to, knit, to, order to be near his widowed mother. He graduated in 1910 with high honours in mathematics and science and secured a position in the laboratory of Ernest Rutherford at the University of Manchester. Henry Mosley, Mosley studied under Rutherford and brilliantly developed the application of X-ray spectra to study atomic structure. Mosley's discoveries resulted in a more accurate position of elements in the periodic table by closer determination of atomic numbers. Tragically, for the num development of science, Mosley was killed in action at Gallipoli in 1915. Ernest Rutherford, in 1913, together with Henry Mosley, he used cathode rays to bombard atoms of various elements and showed that the inner structures corresponded with a group of lines which characterised the elements. Each element could then be assigned an atomic number, and more important, the properties of each element could be defined by this number. He predicted that atoms have their positive charge concentrated in a very small nucleus and thereby pioneered the Rutherford model of the atom through his discovery and interpretation of Rutherford scattering in his gold foil experiment. He is widely credited with, the, with first splitting the atom in 1917 in a nuclear reaction between nitrogen and alpha particles in which he also discovered and named the proton. This led to the first experiment to split the nucleus in a fully controlled manner. In 1919, he discovered that the nuclei of certain light elements, such as nitrogen, could be disintegrated by the impact of energetic alpha particles coming from some radioactive source, and that during this process, fast protons were emitted. It was later proved with the cloud chamber that nitrogen in this process was actually transformed into an oxygen isotope, so that Rutherford was the first to deliberately transmute one element into another.